Oh, buongiorno, wherever you are and whatever time it is in the world right now, you might start to get a little sick of hearing our voices, but hey, we got nothing better to do and there's a lot of Inter coming up. Straight into it, this is the Inter Worldwide Podcast Europa League Preview. Not only are we going to preview the fixture with Rapid, we're going to preview the competition as a whole. It's the round of 32, which means there are bucket loads of teams fighting for the prize to be Europe's second top prestige champion at the end of this calendar season. Mario, how you doing, my friend? Thanks for coming back. Uh, chilling. I don't know. That'd be great. That's, that's it. That's it. What about you, Christian, the realist, Rivas? How you feeling about the Europa League, man? Are you pumped or what? Southampton, happy old Carabag, get there. Yeah, I'm ready to lose and get eliminated by Carabag. <laughs> All right, so jumping right into this one. Ragazzi. Let's try and not be too negative. You know, we got back into the Champions League. We had some great memories, some great moments. But now it's time to mature. It's time to excuse my language, man the fuck up. Because we are in the Europa League. And this is still a competition at the end of the day. It's a prestigious competition. It's a European competition. And it has a couple of pros that go with it. Not only can you touch up your silverware, but it also guarantees a straight route to the UEFA Champions League next season. Myself... I'm pretty confident we'll get past the round of 32. Rapid VN aren't that tough as an opponent. However, the Europa League, the funny league, some teams come to play. It's a cup competition. Some teams put their eggs in their basket and say, you know what? Domestically, we're a little bit up shit creek. Let's go really hard in the cup competitions. And sometimes it's those smaller clubs that catch the big fish off guard. And it's nothing short of an embarrassment for those teams. So a quick look ahead. The game is at 4.55 in the morning Australian time on Friday. Guys, don't get too excited for me, please. Please, keep it down, keep it down. 4.55 in the morning Australian Eastern time. So, Mario, what time is that over in Yankeeville? Uh, it's like, what, 2.30, 4, 3 o'clock? No, it's not, loser. I don't even know. It's 12, it's, it's 12.55 p.m. in Natville. We don't do that Yankee stuff down here. Sorry, dude. My no, bad, my bad. Close enough. <laughs> <laughs> Rapid <laughs> baseball banter there. <laughs> Rapid VN, round of 32, Friday or Thursday, wherever you are, which is about four days away now, so that Agatsi get a pretty good rest. What they don't get a good rest for is the Sampdoria fixture that follows on, which is on a Monday morning for my time, which means it's on a Sunday or even a Saturday evening for you guys or Italy. I don't even know. So the fixture list is going to start getting a little bit congested. And what we're going to focus on in this podcast is Mario is going to run through our opponent, Rapid VN. I hope I'm saying it right. Christian's going to analyze the Europa League as a whole. And I'm going to talk a little bit about our squad and how maybe we need to approach this fixture. Because I know there's a couple of fans out there, Christian included, that are a little worried that we're not going to take this too seriously. But anyway, I'm going to start with Mario. Mario, can you give our listeners some sort of information or something to look into for our opponents. Rapid, please. Rapid Vienna are a dangerous team right now because they're currently sitting in eighth place out of 12 in the Austrian Bundesliga. So what that tells me is, A, they're not very good. B, they have nothing to lose. And C, they're just going to want to get as far in this competition as they can because it's all they're going to have going for them. They just came off of a big loss to Austria, Vienna, you know, another Austrian team over there. That was a big 6-1 loss uh, last week. So it's it's a dangerous one, I'm going to say. So uh, they don't really have much going for them. They have uh, their top goal scorer has three goals in the in the league this season. He's a Danny Alar. Uh, he's a forward, he's older, and then tied with him is a defender, Mario Sundleitner. So, you know, they, they, I don't see them as a potential goal-scoring machine, but they might steal a goal and pack it in the back for all we know. Um, little fun fact, they have an old Inter player, Christoph Nazmulner, who we signed, uh, I think, back in 2009. He was... If I'm correct, he was part of the Champions League winning side back under Mourinho. Uh, fact check me. But anyway, um, as I digress, uh, you know, they're coming off of uh, 
a loss, a win, draw, two wins, two losses. Um, I think they finished second in their group for Europa League. So, I mean, there's really, it's not like you're going to be playing the Chelsea's or the Arsenal's or, or even the Villarreal that they, they had in their group. Uh, for the record, it, just, for the record, this team knocked out Rangers. So you got to give them a little respect. They knocked out the Rangers. They beat them 1-0, right. and they got through. So, I mean, they, they, they do have a little quality there. You got to give them a little. You got to give them a little bit. All right. They might as well be playing the New York Rangers at that point. Um, <laughs> Not like they're better than the Capitals. Oh, my God. Don't get that. Let's leave that for another one. But another Stanley player Pierce. I want to point Another player I want to point out for them is Bully, Bolingoli, and Bombo. Uh, he's a 23-year-old left midfielder from uh, Belgium. Uh, I haven't seen anything from him, but he's got a really cool name, so I'm going to be looking out for him when I watch this game. What, what, what about <laughs> Aliou Abadji? <laughs> Yo, that I guy's mean, yeah. so powerful. He's a good forward. I, I mean, I hope to see him out there so I can be yelling at him the whole game. <laughs> oh man, Mario! Thank you. Christian, uh, yep. in terms of the Europa League as a whole, there are plenty of tough opponents. Plenty of tough opponents. Can you run through just how extended that list of elite opponents are actually occupying what I like to call just basically the Champions League version two at the moment? Man, if you actually look at this round thirty-two draw. You actually have some real quality in there, you know? You got Fernabate, Zenit, Denimo Kiev, Olympiakos. I know we all remember them for doing us a favor and knocking out Milan after they were running their mouths about us getting knocked out by PSV. You still got to remember we have Lazio and Napoli in there, Sevilla, Galatasaray, Benefica, Real Betis, Arsenal, Baron Leverkusen, Dinamo Zagreb, which isn't a bad team. Valencia, Celtic, man, I'm sitting here looking at this, and you could literally build a whole Champions League pool out of this. It's crazy. This is like the yeah. uh, the second or third place teams in Champions League. <laughs> They're all capable of, of doing anything. I mean, you got to remember, yeah. Valencia ain't no slouch, and neither Sevilla. Arsenal yeah, and Chelsea, uh, they're definitely going to take it serious. You know, yeah, you got to also look at their... Chelsea coming off a 6 nothing loss. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're... they're, they're uh, Shaq all, the more, they're... All, all the more reason for Chelsea to take this competition seriously. I mean, you look at the form of the top four in England at the moment, they're probably going to start building a golf between Chelsea and Arsenal. So watch those two sides go absolute hell for leather in this competition going for the prize. Honestly, I think Arsenal's going to try and win it. You know, they need mm. to get back into the Champions League. They weren't there last yes, this season. You know, they need to get back there. They need to go back where they belong. I feel like Arsenal's another enter. Yeah, I feel like those managers are just playing for a contract at this point because <laughs> they've been shitty. They've been underperforming. You have Saudi who was who's brought in to, to turn Chelsea into the Barcelona of the Premier League, and he's all he's out here losing six nothing, getting knocked out of Champions League. Arsenal, they they're looking for any kind of cup at this point. Doesn't even matter what the hell it is, just win something. So I think those they're going to be dangerous. Honestly, honestly, I'm going to disagree right there with that uh, analogy you just used because I would say Arsenal is more likely to try and be the Barcelona of the Premier League as they've always built their whole game on playing beautiful and actual football in England instead of, you know, a lot of these other teams. But like you said, these coaches, they they need to be playing for something. Honestly, Arsenal, I do follow them in the Premier League. I'm not going to lie. I feel like they're Arsene Wenger 2.0 right now. You know? Yeah, they need they need to get it together. Definitely. And yeah, if Emery wants well, to keep man. his job, if Emery wants to keep that job, he better get that win. And you know, they same thing trophies. with Spalletti. He needs to do something. He needs to, uh, you know, a round of sixteen is not good enough, in my opinion, for Spalletti. You know, even no though I don't think he's serious, we need to be at least in the final four. That's just my personal opinion. You know, and. and I'm going to give my point of view about the Europa League real quick. A lot of people don't take it too serious. I've been to a Europa League game. My first match ever at the San Siro, well, at the Miata, as I call it, was Inter versus Celtic, where Guarín hit that. We hit that upper 90 on the top left corner. And what was it, the 85th minute? Oh, my gosh. Like, like that. 
And those Celtic fans, they didn't care it was in Champions League. They took that match serious. They were singing and chanting the whole game. You know, we, yes, we as Inter fans, we as Inter fans, we're one of the top teams that have won that. We've won that t- tournament three times, and we've been runner-up once. You know, we need to stop acting like it's not a serious competition. Well, it's, it's funny. I hope we can do something in there. Yeah, absolutely. Mario, before I go into the next point with you, I made a point of saying at the last podcast, we, we are very good at talking like a big club. Where we struggle is behaving like a big club. We, we act like it's so easy to put theory into practice. Inter is coming. Inter is here. Well, Inter got knocked out of the Champions League, Mr. Zhang. So I really hope that you are someone who takes this competition seriously. Like Christian said, it's a competition where we need to look at showcasing to us that we are back to the world. And unfortunately, the world isn't going to look at a serious Inter who drops out in the round of 32, who drops out in the round of 16. Quarterfinals has to be the bare minimum. That's where other teams actually recognize who is left. And nobody looking at the round of 32 right now except for their own fixtures. And nobody's going to look at the round of 16 except their own fixtures. Of course, you take a glance at the broad scheme of things, but in the quarterfinals is where many managers in the past, just to go off the top of my head, Mourinho, Conte, even Sir Alex Ferguson said, the quarterfinals of a knockout competition is no matter who you are, that's where you start to believe that you can win it. Mario, what are your expectations going in and what's, what's the absolute bare minimum finish for you, man? I'm going to reach. I'm going to say we should be making semifinals of this because uh, we have to strive for better. If we want to fuck around and get kicked out of this round of 60 with Austria Vienna, that's how the next season's going to go. We're going to fuck around. We're going to drop points with Parma and all those stupid teams again. You know, it, it, they're going to say, oh, but it, it, that game doesn't matter. This game doesn't matter. Every game should matter. Mourinho, he, he saved another year on his contract because of uh, winning a uh, Europa League or whatever the hell he did with, uh, with he Manchester did. Yep. United. So, yep. you know, and then it bought him some time. Spalletti can do the same thing. He can buy him some self-time. He has a way out in case uh, we tank in Serie A. So I, I think, you know, a trophy is better than not winning a trophy at all. Europa League is better than sitting home with our thumbs in our asses saying, oh, Milan suck, or, oh, triple at the 85 million times until, you know, Juve starts laughing at us. I agree. Uh, I completely for agree. the record, for the record, Mr. Zhang, you better take this serious because my dumbass was sitting there at the PSV game watching Spalletti sit there and play for a draw when we should have been playing for a win. My dumbass flew yes. all the way from D.C., the C.A. draw, and get laughed at once I got back to work from all my coworkers that said, damn, you flew all the way to Milan to watch your team draw and get knocked out the Champions League. How do you feel? I hope you asked for a refund. Well, I didn't pay for my shit, so I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Always just the last word anyway. Your time. Yeah. All right, boys. Quickly, what we need to talk about is, you know, we've spoken about our opponent. We've spoken about all the potential opponents. Let's move into focus around ourselves. We're in charge of our own destiny here. Let's not go out and say, oh, it's the luck of the draw. It's no matter who you get, bullshit. It's us. We're Inter. No matter who we come up against in this tournament, we should be looking to beat them. In terms of our team news going into the next fixture, I'm not 100% sure if this is true, but I have read that Marcelo Brozovic is unavailable for the first leg. Has anybody else heard about that? Uh, that is correct, sir. He is unavailable for the first leg. So the accumulation of yellow cards in the Champions League is what has caused this. So we are going to be playing this match without Marcelo Brozovic. Now that already sends shockwaves up my spine because we have relied so heavily on Epic Brozo this season to be the driving force in our midfield and our creative outlet. If he doesn't start the field, Mr. Rivas, where do we go from there in terms of lining up in midfield? Do we drop Raja Nangolan back? Because I think that's the kind of match where Raja Nangolan would be exposed without Marcelo Brozovic with him deeper in midfield. I'm actually a little bit lost for what we're going to do going into the match midfield-wise. Mr. Rivas, care to help out? Honestly, it's not like we got much of a choice. Uh, Gagliardini is not in the lineup. Mar- Joao Mario is not in the lineup. Yep. <laughs> what are we going to do? Of course we got to play with Raja in the middle. Personally, I like Raja playing deep. you know, But I would love for him to be accompanied by Brozo. Instead, he's going to be accompanied by garbage. I mean, uh, by Vecino. <laughs> so, you know, 
our our lineup should I, be interesting. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we went three four three with uh, let's say Miranda, the Rice Greenyard as our back three. Your midfield will probably look at Asamoa, Nangolan, Trask. I mean Vecino, <laughs> the Ambrosio. Then you're gonna look at the top three, most likely Perisic, uh, Scumbag. I mean Icardi, and uh, Candreva. Or I can play dude, that. dude, just. Just to bump in, I have to point out, um, Milan Skriniar is actually also suspended for the first leg, man. He's got an accumulation of yellows as well. So you may have to swap Milan Skriniar with Il Capitano Andrea Ranocchia. Yes! 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 yes. That's the best news I've heard all Honestly, day. I said captain. it just so I could see if anybody was sick, so I could sit there and say, Mi Capitano! <laughs> <laughs> well, I, uh, I can actually... Know. You know I got that Renokia jersey in my closet. So I yes, don't care do. what anybody yes, do. says. My boy Rano is starting. That's my captain right there. That's my yeah, captain. I can, I, I can actually see us go in a 4-4-2 and start uh, Martinez and Icardi. If Icardi even plays because I still feel like Spalletti is going to fuck around and be like, hey, uh, let's just close our eyes and pick out a bad who's going to play where. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised to see Antonio Candreva definitely starting in that particular match. Just keep in mind, the turnover, the turnover for Sampdoria is very short. So if Keita Balde is back to full fitness, which I expect him to be, the longer this guy stays on the bench, the more I am very fishy about some sort of clause in his contract where if the minutes aren't met, we don't have to do anything. However, I could look stupid saying that because I'm pretty sure we've got an option for his contract, not an obligation. Can any of you boys jump in and just correct me on that? Yes, we have an option, not an obligation. Intro wants to go back and negotiate according to, uh, you know, sources out there. I also want to say a side note, Anthony. I love the side of you cursing. It's, it's, very, it's very classy. I enjoy it. Like, I feel more, more comfortable now because I, I talk like a sailor and so does Mario. So I, I just it's want to so say hard thank to hold it back letting, sometimes. Yeah, thank you for letting me express myself for the way I like to express myself. Uh, well, we're all about expressing ourselves here, man. You just you just be yourself. That's all we ask of our family over here, bro. So what we're going to look towards now is a little bit of a prediction for the first leg. Now, the first leg is away. Now, for me, we need to get something in this first leg. Let's not talk about what happens if we don't, because if we go to the Miazza, say hypothetical situation, we go to wrap it away, we have a few chances, we don't put it away, and the game ends nil-nil. And everyone walks off going, oh, yeah, we'll beat them at the Miazza. Hell no. We are not going no to beat way. them at the Miazza. That ends 1-1. One, one. That ends 1-1. One, one. We need to get a good result from Rapid. And by good result, I mean a victory or a high play draw. 2-0 or 3-2 or 3-3 or, or win the match 3-2. Now, I can't see in a universe where we're going to get three goals from at the moment, to be honest. That's why I'm a little bit worried that we play negative football and we think that we've got time up the ass because it's two legs. We don't have time. We have nothing. We need to go health for leather out of the gates in this leg to make sure Rapid know that they don't stand a chance at the Miazza. So, boys, Mario, give us your prediction, man. How do we need to approach the first leg? What kind of result do we need? We have to attack them. We have to go straight at them. There's no way around it. We have to play to win. Um, going back to their stats from earlier, they're 3-3-3. Three, three, and three at home this season in league play, letting up six goals and scoring six goals. So they're not really, there's not really much there. They defend and they don't attack, it seems. So if we just go at them, I think we might be able to steal a couple goals because we have been creating chances. It's just a matter of not being able to finish them because, you know, we got some stupid idiot in the front of the goal uh, playing as a goalkeeper center back for the other team. But, you know, that's a different story. Um, you know, I can see us. I can see us scoring two goals easy, or I can see us uh, losing one to zero. I'm gonna go to two zero. Win. Thanks, bro. Lucky, give me some confidence. What about you, Rivas? I'm gonna say one zero because it'll be the typical inner thing to do. We'll leave it, it all the way to about the 85th, 86th minute, and then we're gonna start feeling with a sense of urgency. We're gonna start playing and attacking and attacking, and then we'll break the we'll break the deadlock, and they'll finish one zero. And the reason why I say that is, 
Honestly, who scores for me or who do I want to score? It's a difference. Who do you think scores? Honestly, I'm going to say Raja or Paris. I'm going to go with Ambrosio. Oh, fuck. Of course. I, I hope so. <laughs> don't, don't get me excited. Honestly, though, I think it's going to be either Raja from outside the box or it's going to be Paris from outside the box with a curler. Mm. I reckon El Toro. I reckon El Toro grabs it again. I reckon he keeps sticking the nail in the Mauro coffin. The, um, I'm, I'm gonna go uh, D'Ambrosio and Candreva to stick with my two zero. Yeah, You're just sticking that. it to me. You're just sticking it to me now, bro. Let's just hey, be honest hey, with hey, each other. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, Anthony, we gotta exercise that D'Ambrosio hate from your heart, brother. Man, we gotta, honestly, we gotta uh, get uh, that out. I got to get it in quickly because I forgot to get it in at the last podcast. Did you see his first cross of the match against Palmer that ended up in the 75th row? Man, it's great. He is just, it, it encompasses everything that's bang average for me. And yeah, I'm still sad about Mike Con. I'll always be sad about Mike Con, but I've seen fair few. I've seen a fair few fullbacks come into us that were better than D'Ambrosio. Hell, give me Nagatomo any day of the week over D'Ambrosio. I just don't, I find him so average on the defensive end as well. So, Mario, go for it, man. Where did your vanilla fetish start, man? Come on. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Stop smoking Christian, go. Crack. Christian, go. I'll go after. Stop smoking crap. <laughs> Saying that Danilo's average, bro. Let, let's, be, let's be real right here. A lot of people give him shit because he's not back on. But you also got to remember, he does put in his solid. He, he puts in good efforts on the outing. Dude, last season, he had Cancelo on the bench. Cancelo cried like a little bitch that he didn't want to play on the left side. So what Danilo do? He went and he played on the left side, and he did well on the left side. At the start of the season last year, Danilo was class with Candreva. They overlapped each other well. They played good one-twos together. They, they were fantastic together. But again, we had to... He didn't bitch. He didn't cry. He went. He did it. He got the job done. He's solid defensive. He's good going up the wing and playing short passes. It's one of his strengths. You know, like, let's be serious. A lot of people don't like the guy. Cool. Look, I it. think that's all, that's all yeah. well and good. I just think at this level of professionalism, if you're making five or six-yard passes, you better bet that 99% of them stay accurate, man. Because <laughs> God forbid he turned over some of those balls on the wing, I'd be going straight for his head. Look, it's not that he's a bad player. I get it. I just, I just think he encompasses the no, mediocre. No, no, no. Dude, here, man. You mean like Danilo D'Ambrosio is a bad mamma jamma. That's all I have to say. <laughs> He's the goat, bro. I got his. I got two of his jerseys in my closet. I don't care what no. oh, I man. hated. I hated him so much when he first came because I thought this is the most average. I uh, there's nothing to his game. But then as I see him come and steal every single one, every single person's right back position. Who do we bring in? Uh, we brought in Nagatomo. He benched him at first. We brought in, um, I don't even know. There's a whole list of them. There's Rosalco, who, who still didn't play. Great, great player that he's benched. And it's our management's fault then. Basically, what we're saying is we're, we're happy that D'Ambrosio has been there as the six to six and a half out of ten fullback to back up our management when they've bought Alvaro Pereira, who's a five out of ten, or Alex Teles, who was in the club for about three weeks before he went back to Turkey, or Kana Erkin, who was the same way as well. Like, honestly, I feel like D'Ambrosio is another Ranocchia in a way that he's a great motivational figure for the club. He probably upholds the dressing room well. And you know what? He looks like an Interista. So I'll give him that much. I'll give him that much that he gives out. Yeah, that's all. That's he but that's what we need. What do Interistas? Yo, he benched Montoya, who's bowling right now at Valencia, a former yep. Barca product who won the Champions League with that team. Remember when Barcelona had... All the 11 of the starters on their team playing in the Champions League that came from their academy. All right, not just Montoya yeah. and Saudi, another Argentine who starts for the Argentine national team. Who benched them? The Ambrosio. First Sarko. Yeah. Man starts for the Croatian national team who made it to the World Cup finals. Who benched them? The Ambrosio. 
good. All these points sound really good as a whole, but then when you analyze each fullback that they've benched one by one, there's been a motive for all of them. Either the, the fullback's been bang average or there's been some disagreement in their contract that's basically shipped them back off elsewhere. I mean, what Erkin, oh. Tellis, and Montoya had, what, four, four performances between the three of them? Well, let's be serious. <laughs> Whose fault is that, though? Is that Danilo's fault for him better. always? Is that Danilo's fault for always stepping up when he needs to step up? Yo, let's be real. You guys don't want to talk about it, but he benched Cancelo too. Everybody had a fetish and still has a fetish with Cancelo. The Ambrosio benched that man too. The only reason, if you look at it tactically, the only reason why Cancelo looked even any slightly decent last season was because of the tactics that were being run. Cancelo will be out of position nine out of ten times, but he will be covered by either Brozovic or the whole defensive back line will shift over. He would be covered by Gagliardini. He always has somebody backing him up when he would make those crazy runs where he would not be in his place. Let, let's go back and really analyze it because everybody Even talks about how great Cancelo was, but defensively he was not that good. If I'm putting up $30, $40 million for one player and he's a defender, motherfucker, you better learn how to defend and hold a position. And even Versalco, he starts, he comes to, to give an offensive boost for, you know, what seemed to be lacking. He comes, he plays, what, uh, 10 games, gets hurt, 11 games, gets hurt, whatever the hell it was. He got two assists. It's not like he was banging in crosses for Icardi to score. He got two assists, and I don't even think Icardi scored them. You know, no, so like, that's, also, who he, that's who he's putting on the bench. Yeah. Don't forget, the Ambrosio also had a goal, and was it three assists so far this season, two or three assists? You might have to go back and stat check me, Mario. But D'Ambrosio has been doing it time and time again. Like last season, Danilo's stats were better than Cancelo's at the end of the season. Everybody talks about all the goals this and the third. Look at the numbers. The numbers don't lie. Absolutely. Look, just for the record, the numbers do not lie. And as much as I did appreciate Cancelo's uh, amazing attacking contribution down the right flank, he was a little rusty as a right back and 35 to 40 million was way too much. And Juventus went against their own blood and their own style of uh, management by purchasing a player for that magnitude. And he has been exposed this season a little bit, especially when they don't have their Italian centre-backs in Bonucci and Chiellini next to him. But we're going a little bit off track here. Before I move into a couple of comments from our fans and a poll that we've actually been running as well about the Rapid fixture, Mario, do you have anything else to contribute to the overall fixture with Rapid or the Europa League? Hey, Mario, um... wait, wait one minute. Anthony, I want to hear you say it. The Ambrosio is the GOAT. Just say no, it. No, no, never. Never, never. I will, I will say, say it for me. Can, say it for you me. Can quote, you can quote me on every podcast. I'll say something different, but he's going to have to do a little bit more to earn that status. I will go out right now and go, D'Ambrosio puts in work. All right, we'll leave it at that. He puts in some work, but we can and, revisit okay, okay, towards the end it. of the season. I'll take Thank it. You. I'll take French fry instead of getting the whole box. I'll take it. <laughs> Mario, any thoughts about the Europa League and Rapid before we close off? Um, I mean, it's a, it's going to be a shitty game, I think. Uh, but a little fun fact for all you listeners out there. Last time uh, Inter lost to an Austrian team was in 1973 against Admiral Wacker, where my friend's father, Manfred Kapper, got the game-winning assist for Admiral Wacker. So there you go. The more you know. See something, say something. <laughs> oh, man. That's out of this world. You almost don't believe it until you see it. For <laughs> information. <laughs> Rivas, anything real to leave us with going into Rapid? Yeah, I hope D'Ambrosio scores a hat-trick. <laughs> and I hope, and Me I hope too. Ronald the game winner. And then everybody can sit there and just look at my jerseys and be like, yo, does this man really have that many D'Ambrosio and Renokia jerseys? And I will say yes. Oh, well, well, one more thing to add to uh, Cancelo before we leave this. Uh, he was only bought so they could get Ronaldo. He also uh, saw. He was bought for two reasons. He was bought to entice the fellow Portuguese, Ronaldo, and he was also bought because Jao Cancelo was playing for us. There is no purchase of Cancelo <laughs> in another league. There's no purchase of Cancelo if he plays for anyone else. It's not... He, Jao Cancelo was not interesting enough until he came over to us, if that makes a lot of sense to you. So, Juventus bought Cancelo for one reason and one reason only. They didn't like seeing us play with the toys that they are not allowed to play with themselves. Very simple. True. So we've got a bit of a poll that's been running a lot. You disagree? 
No, I said hashtag at Petty States of America. <laughs> uh, we ran, we ran a poll. What? We ran a poll this week on the rapid match, and to be honest, I don't know whether everyone's just trolling us or I don't know what's going on. But these statistics are way too low for us to be playing Austria. Out of 106 votes, get this one, boys. Out of 106 votes, only 60 Inter fans think that we are going to win the first leg, which means there are 46 Interesti out there that don't think on this poll that we are going to grab the victory. Looking at our opponents, that's a very, very surprise uh, statistic. So I guess you could say that the confidence is still quite low in the fan base at the moment. A couple of comments have been sent through as well, where we ran a bit of a polling question on Twitter. Who do you think will be the standout performer against Rapid Bien? And we had a comment from Wesley from Sydney, Australia, from my hometown himself. He says, I desperately think it's time for Asamoah to have a good match, whether it's in defence or in midfield. I think it's time for him to showcase his experience. Also, Raja Nangolan will be fundamental. I would have to agree. And another comment has come in from Peter as well. He is echoing the thoughts that a lot of fans are hoping. He thinks Icardi is going to grab a hat trick in this match. He thinks this is the match that he does it. This is the match that he comes back. And you know what? It wouldn't surprise me if it is this kind of opponent that he does excel in um, for the next fixture. But to be honest, we're all hoping that he proves us wrong, at least for our own results' sake. Mario, thanks for joining me, man. I'm sure you'll be back soon, and we'll have plenty more to chat about. Keeping it real always. Yeah, that's because you're a classy guy there, Mario. That's right. Stay classy. Pinky you up. too, Mr. Realist. You stay classy as well, bro. Pinky up like SpongeBob. That's it. <laughs> all right, ragazzi. Thanks for joining us. To all everyone listening, Forza Inter, Forza Inter Worldwide. Catch you soon. <laughs>